morning all. So I'm back from the trip to uh, Faroe Islands and Scotland now. And today I am in the forest, quite close to where I live. It's only a couple of miles away. Um, we've had quite a bit of rain over the last couple of days. And now the temperature has finally dropped and it's sunny and brisk. Um, so a much nicer autumn day, what you kind of want at this time of year. So I thought I would come to the forest and wander around see if I could find any uh, mushrooms or fungus. Uh, I haven't shot any of those for a little while. Don't know if there will be any, but uh, yeah, worth a little forage around. So I found what I'm going to term a white blobby small mushroom. I don't know the Latin name and you're not going to get any Latin names in this video. Um, so the reason I'm hunting mushrooms is because I've got a new lens. Um, I traded in one that I wasn't using too much with MPB and I've picked up the Voigtlander 110mm f2.5 um, and this does a one-to-one -one macro reproduction. So. I've not really played around with macro before, apart from some extension tubes, and I never really had great success with those, so I thought it was about time I picked up a proper macro lens just to see how well it works. Uh, I think this lens is meant to be pretty good for just generic landscapes as well. Uh, it's not a one-trick pony, as it were, so it'll be interesting to see what I get with it today. Um, anyway, yeah, this little fungus is right down on the ground, so uh, I can't use the tripod, but I'm using the tripod just to stop the camera falling over. It's a bit Heath Robinson. But uh, yeah, anyway, first shot done, keep wandering, see what I can find. So I've headed off the footpath um, into the less footpathy bit, um, thinking it's going to be a bit darker, more likely for mushrooms to grow. So I've found some, what I'm going to call um, brown, small, shiny mushrooms. Uh, they're a little bit scrappy looking though and really close to the ground, so I'm not sure they warrant a photo. But I've just spotted something that's much prettier. It's a little sort of conical one um, sticking out of a mossy log. Uh, so it's elevated off the ground slightly as well. I think that's got some potential so I'm just going to clear the ferns out of the way and uh, see what I can get with that. Okay so I think this one came out all right. Um, I've added a little bit of extra light with an LED panel and uh, I've just got the sort of mossy log uh, in the foreground with the little mushroom standing up above it. Had to do a little bit of housekeeping. There was a little blob of muck on it, so we uh, flicked that off with a stick. But uh, I've taken three images, so I'm shooting at f8, but it's still not quite enough to get the um, sort of stem of the mushroom and the cap all in focus. So I've taken three shots, which I'll uh, stack together in Photoshop afterwards. <laughs> found an unspotted larger red fella at the side of the path um, but it was a bit of a scrappy example so I grabbed a handheld shot but um, yeah it didn't seem worth persevering with um, so continue along this path and I can see some one I'm going to call hefty grey bulbs up ahead now these could be worth a look they're quite the uh, erection. So I think with this one um, it probably doesn't really need macro ability because it's so large and the good thing is there's a dip in the ground next to it so uh, I think I'll be able to set the tripod up on its lowest level and shoot across to that one. Um, that's going to give the sunlight shining in from the side so uh, before it disappears behind a tree I will grab a shot. I did a couple of images in the end of the uh, large one. I'm going to call him Fungal Sharky. Um, yeah, I did one sort of including the stem and then one just close up of the head of it. Is that the right term? I really ought to have learned about these things before I came in. Um, anyway, the head, trying to get some of the textures. Anywho, 
and I'm continuing my walk along. Uh, I was just going to say, I do like this time of year. Um, normally when you go into a forest you don't really want bright sunlight, but I quite like at the moment how uh, the sun is just sort of lighting up certain little bits. So, you know, a leaf, a tree branch. Um, and I think that could form a nice photo. And there's a nice orange bit of fern here, because half of it's orange, half of it's green, they're just sort of turning. Um, but yeah, that's just being picked up by the sun, so I might grab a photo of that. So, thoughts on the lens so far? Um, pretty impressed. Um, like I say, it's a 110mm focal length, uh, f2.5 aperture, so it's not like a 1.8 or anything, but the amount of bokeh that you get when shooting close up is obviously still quite a lot, um, and the depth of field at macro focal length is obviously tiny, so I mean, to be honest, half the shots I've done today I've stopped down to f8 anyway. Um, it's also um, what they call apochromatic. Um, and I guess the simple explanation means that it's got glass that's better at focusing all the different wavelengths of different colours to the same point, which uh, not all lenses do. So that should give minimal chromatic aberrations. Um, I did just do a quick test shot, pretty much pointing up towards the sun with a bunch of tree branches in the frame. Um, and at least looking on the back of the camera I can see no purple fringing around the branches at all, which is pretty impressive because that's kind of a worst case scenario shot. Um, build quality is good, um, it's like an all metal construction, similar design to my little 15mm Voigtlander. Um, so feels very well made, focus ring is smooth. I guess the downside is the amount of focus throw uh, is pretty enormous. Um, I haven't got the specs to hand, but from one end to the other it takes you know quite a few turns of the hand but the good thing is when you're shooting further away stuff um, so I guess you know landscape type shots um, anything in a vague distance away um, the actual focus throw you need is pretty small uh, it's only really you know churn through it once you start doing macro and I guess that's kind of by design because it means you can be really really accurate so yeah, it's, it's not really a bad point, I guess. Um, and I guess the other good thing is it's got the electronic contacts. So although it's manual focus, uh, obviously when you start turning it, it does tell the camera. So that puts it into zoomed in mode, if you've got it set up that way, uh, to help focus, which is good. And it means it'll also record the EXIF data on the images, uh, saying the focal length and aperture which is nice and it means it should also work with the body stabilization so there you go a very quick review of the camera i don't really know i'm walking now i think the car is behind me i'm sort of headed off up this path i'll see if there's anything interesting looking and then go back that way i almost missed these but just on the corner of where a couple of footpaths meet um there's some little tiny sort of flowers just down low in the grass and they seem to be covered almost in frost which it won't be frost because it's not that cold um, maybe it's like dew or water droplets or something um, but anyway I shall see if I can get a photo of one they're not in the easiest position because they're very much shoved in the long grass and I think if I try and move it it's going to disturb the plant but I'll see what I can work out okay well, I've managed to set up the camera um, sort of top down to one of the little flowers um, and I can now see if I zoom in that it is covered in lots of tiny tiny little droplets of water which is pretty fantastic so grab uh, a few images I might focus stack it but I'm wondering if actually just one shot with a few of the droplets in focus will come out better but I'll stack anyway while I'm here and then I've got the option when I get them back on the computer
So yeah, like most of the forest around here, this isn't uh, ancient woodland or anything. It's, uh, I guess, planted, managed type forest. Uh, hence, a lot of the trees are in quite neat rows, which occasionally makes for a nice photo. I haven't taken one today, but uh, I've done a few last year where I sort of look down the tunnel of trees and there's, you know, one set of branches halfway down just catching the light. Uh, which worked pretty well. So I'm keeping an eye out for an equivalent today. None as yet. Possibly the sun's in the wrong place. We stop and pay our respects to the fallen red medium blobber. Uh, he served well. I'm kind of wondering how this lens would do for uh, astrophotography now. So potentially it's a clear night tonight. I might stick it on the tracker and have a go because um, the results so far at least on the back of the camera show that it's uh, very sharp and like I said earlier minimal chromatic aberrations so uh, I think it could perform quite well sorry I've moved but um, I was just going to aim uh, I don't know if that's a good shot or not down this line of trees yeah, I'm not sure it looked better as I walked past. Maybe I'll try it anyway. just stumbled across uh, in an old bit of wood. Um, I think the Latin name is uh, Tiny Yellow Poker, because uh, it's popping up out of the wood. Um, I'm not sure how easily I'm going to get a shot of this, because it's quite low down. Um, but there is a dip next to me, so I can possibly get the camera in there. Um, but yeah, this is truly tiny. It's like less than a centimetre across, so it'll be interesting to see how the lens performs on this one. So uh, not far from the tiny one, I also stumbled across a uh, pale flat-headed grifter um, growing out of some moss on an old tree trunk, so I grabbed an image with that. Uh, so I'm almost back towards the car now, I think, but there just seem to be quite rich pickings in this little area here. So I'm going to see what else I can stumble across. Well, I'm pretty much back at the car now, I think, so uh, I shall wrap up this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little wander around the forest with me um, and you've learned some science while we're here and uh, enjoyed the images. So, uh, horse poo. Um, yeah, anyway, I think uh, this video is probably going to appear before the video from Scotland, so if you want to see some images from Scotland, uh, do make sure you click subscribe and uh, drop any comments down below. Otherwise, I shall see you soon.